الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon His final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I welcome you all in Ramadan this month of blessings Alhamdulillah we have entered the month of blessings it is called the month of blessings or many people refer to Ramadan as the month of blessings because there is so much good that can be done in this month and it is so beneficial for the individual and the society as a whole. To start with this, there is an interesting hadith. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, has mentioned that as soon as the first night of Ramadan enters, four things happen. Number one, the devils, the shayateen, sufidat, sufidat shayateen, meaning they are chained. Yes, the devils are chained. So if the devils are chained, then you are more, then you're less likely to sin in this blessed month. Number two, the doors of the heavens, of the paradise open. All the doors of the paradise open and the doors of hellfire close. Subhanallah. This is the perfect environment for you to do good deed. What's stopping you from entering paradise? It's like, go on, seek paradise. There's nothing between you and paradise. And it is said, Ya baghi al-khayr aqbil, wa ya baghi al-shar aqsir. O seeker of good, proceed. And O seeker of evil, halt. This is the time to seek Allah's approval. This is the time to be a righteous servant, to do good deeds. Ya baghi al-khayr akbar, O seeker of good, this is the month, this is your month. The opportunities are there in front of you in the day and night to seek Allah's approval, to increase in faith, to increase in levels in paradise. And for the person who is sinning, who is struggling with sins, this is also your month to stop to be strong, to go against your desires for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month, the month of repentance. This is the month, the month of blessings. If a person goes through this month and leaves out without his sins being forgiven, then he has lost a great opportunity. And he has someone who is really can't take advantage of any opportunity in front of him. This brings us to a hadith, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu has said, رَغِمَ أَنْفُ مْرِئٍ إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانٍ ثُمَّ سَلَخْ وَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهِ So a person, رَغِمَ أَنْفْ, رَغِمَ أَنْفْ, it's a phrase, if you translate it, the literal meaning is, let his nose and face be on the ground, meaning, meaning what kind of a person leaves out this big opportunity, not getting his sins expiated in such a month, so the month enters and leaves without his sins being expiated. That is a person who is truly a loser, who has lost a lot. But why? There are so many opportunities for our sins to be expiated in this blessed month. Number one, fasting. Fasting this month. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ If you have the night, the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, has said, Man qama Ramadan, iman and wahti saban, wufira lahuma taqaddama min dhamb. So the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said, Whoever fasts this holy month of Ramadan, this month of Ramadan, then his sins will be expiated. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Whoever does qiyam in the whole month of Ramadan, then his sins will be expiated much good in Ramadan. Ramadan is a blessed month. You can find in yourself, you're motivated to do good deeds. You're motivated to leave sins. And the atmosphere is the perfect atmosphere to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is regarding the individual himself on how to seek Allah's pleasure in this month. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, has said that on every night in Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees some slaves from hellfire. This, let this sink in, brothers and sisters. Every night of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees some slaves from hellfire. Meaning these people will not enter 
hellfire. Utaqa minan nar. They are freed from hellfire. How is this even possible? They're freed from hellfire even though they're on this world, on this earth, walking, eating, and drinking, and living their life. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed them from hellfire. Yes. This is of the blessings of this month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on every night picks some of his servants and frees them from hellfire. Meaning these, this person will not be entering hellfire. And this is an authentic hadith. And every night the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam How do we seek this? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of those people that are freed from hellfire. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you this blessing. Now let's explain this. What does this mean? This means if a person was chosen to be freed from hellfire, doesn't mean that he'll be a person that does not sin. No, he'll be a normal person. Or you'll find doing a lot of good deeds, always racing to do good. But does that mean he will never sin? No, he will sin. Because no one is uh, protected from sins. If he does sin, you'll find him repenting, going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the secret of being one of those chosen people that are freed from hellfire. You'll find that they will always be guided to do good. This is something very big, something that we all seek. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of those people that are freed from hellfire. There are, we've spoken about the direct effects of Ramadan on the person, but there are some passive effects. This is how you want to rephrase it. Indirect effects on the Muslim. How is that? A person who is not used to reciting Quran, a person who is not used to coming to the masjid or is not used to doing Qiyam. Once Ramadan starts, he'll find that everyone around him is doing Qiyam. Everyone around him is fasting. Everyone around him is holding a Mus'haf and looking at it. This will have an effect and he will say, well, well why not me? Well, maybe there's something wrong with me. Why am I not doing what they are doing? Why are they putting so much effort into this? Obviously, they're seeking something very precious. Otherwise, they will not be putting all this effort into these actions. This is the passive da'wah. When everyone is engaging in worship, in worship, those people in the middle who usually are not engaging in worship, they'll come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they'll start questioning themselves. They'll say, you know what, maybe I have left that straight path of Islam. Maybe I have done so many mistakes in my life. Now is the time to change and to be with the Muslims, with the general Muslims. And this is very important. And we see that every year many people repent and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find that many people accept Islam in these circumstances. But that will talk about the effect of Ramadan on the society. So a person, he, he finds himself unfamiliar with these acts of worship, suddenly he's practicing this worship. He's going with his family to do Qiyam, or they're doing Qiyam at home, or he's suddenly reciting more Qur'an, and he's fasting, and he's abstaining from food and drink on all desires, and everything that is haram, inshaAllah. He's leaving the things that are haram. Another thing is that he is training himself. 30 days, 30 consecutive days of leaving haram, 30 consecutive days of training yourself, after Ramadan, now is the time to test your fasting in Ramadan. You'll find that there's an effect. You find that, alhamdulillah, those people who are struggling with certain sins say, well, you know what? I have left those sins for 30 consecutive days. Why am I not able to leave it for the rest of my life? Then the process of change starts. And inshallah, it becomes, he becomes a better person, a different person after Ramadan. So this is the indirect effect of Ramadan on the person. Now we want to talk about the effects of Ramadan, this blessed month on the family as a whole. Usually, everyone is busy, okay? Parents are busy with their work, children are busy with school, and everyone is just busy with himself. This is just how life is, okay? We don't have time to socialize anymore. The family ties, sadly to say, is disconnected. You know, many of the ties of kinship has been, have been severed due to some of them due to, you know, dunya, and some of them just because people are just busy. Then comes in Ramadan. And it has been a tradition all over the world. Muslims gather at times of breaking the fast. When breaking the fast, they gather. 
and alhamdulillah everyone prepares the food and they gather together and they eat and you will find the blessing, the blessings of this month evident to the people. In the family, alhamdulillah the issues between the man, his wife and the children, alhamdulillah they become calm and this atmosphere of Ramadan soothes the emotions and alhamdulillah people forgive, people tend to forgive in this month and you'll find the ties of family, you know, the family ties become very strong and the children and the parents come together and they all join in eating and also this is the time that children experience Ramadan and experience Islam and practice Islam more. Parents, they motivate their children to achieve, to to, go, to complete these challenges, the challenge of fasting. Some of them might be as young as eight, nine or seven and this is the first time that they fast. So now the parents make, uh, start motivating their children to complete this challenge and saying, you know what, everyone is fasting, make your best to fast and telling them about how we Muslims, we do this for the sake of Allah. So the children are motivated and you know we start cheering them to continue their fasting alhamdulillah at the time of maghrib when the sun sets the happiness covers the whole family that you know i have done my fast i have fasted for the sake of allah and everyone is enjoying alhamdulillah and the ties the family ties become strong subhanallah if you have invested if you have spent if you want if you spend so much money trying to achieve this it will be extremely difficult but now just practicing islam and being there in Ramadan and just fasting for the sake of Allah, you're getting all these bonuses plus it's a worship obligated on you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the effect of Ramadan, this blessed month on the society, on the Muslim society? Well, there are many blessings of, from this. Number one, alhamdulillah, soothing the hearts and bringing people together, especially those people who have issues between them, arguments for the sake of dunya, subhanallah. When the month of Ramadan comes, the community as a whole knows that there are issues between those two specific people. So what's going to happen is that people will come together, will be encouraged to bring these two people together and to fix what's between them. And This is a great act of worship, one of the most beloved acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though he subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of need and he does not need us, he is happy when such acts of when such things happen, when two people concile. Actually, we also know that when two people uh, when there are problems between two people and each one of them avoids the other and does not do salam, does not pronounce salam to the other, that those people, their acts of worship will be prevented from being accepted or will be prevented from being uh, raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until they reconcile and until they become brothers again. Okay, so that's why this month of Ramadan, it's an opportunity. You'll find people are encouraged to forgive. People are encouraged, you know, to fix the problems that are there in the community. That's number one. Number two, helping the, the poor and helping those who are in need. In Ramadan, people are searching for the poor. It's not the poor who are searching for the people who are wealthy. The wealthy are searching for the poor. Poor. They know the wealthy want Allah's uh, want mercy from Allah, and they want Allah's acceptance. So what they do, what they do is that they look for the poor people and the needy. Why? To help them, to aid them, and this is to thank Allah's, uh, to thank the blessings and favors of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by helping and aiding the poor. And alhamdulillah, this person brings them food. The other person asks about their debt, and everyone helps, and the community as a whole flourishes and becomes a strong community and the ties become so strong that the people, the outsiders, when they look at this community, they might think that this is just one whole big family because of these effects. And this is very evident in Ramadan. This is the spirit of Islam anyways, but it is really evident in Ramadan. And you'll find people sharing food. You know, you'll find plates coming and going, different types of cuisines given here and there and people are enjoying all types of food and alhamdulillah neighbors are happy with each other. You find, you find people who have absolutely no connection with their neighbors. Once Ramadan comes, alhamdulillah you find people spending and sending food for them and you know sharing the food with the people and sending food to the people who are needy and helping the people. So this is something very very that has a great effect. This is one of the blessings of this month of Ramadan on the society. 
And also, what is there is that, let's not forget when the society comes together for the sake of Allah, like worship. Like when you go to the masjid and you find in the Qiyam prayer, people are putting things, free water. Some of them are putting free meals for the people to take. Some of them are putting dates. The community as a whole works together. Why? Because they want the best for those people who are going to be coming to that uh, prayer. Who are going to be praying in jama'ah, in congregation. So they'll be taking care of them. So everyone is working together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, wallahi, one of the clear blessings of this month on the society as a whole. Now we want to talk about the effects of this blessed month on the non-Muslims living in the area. You see, when non-Muslims, what they know of Islam is what they see from the people. This is something very evident and very clear. But once the month of Ramadan comes, they see something very interesting. This is something that, this sight is something that they don't get to see in their countries. When they see people coming together, when they see people are joining together in prayer and joining, coming together for breaking the fast, everyone, people from different nationalities, from different backgrounds, sitting next to each other, people from different levels of the, uh, of the community, some of them might be managers, some of them might be workers, some of them might be jobless, yet they're all sitting next to each other and enjoying the same type of food, eating together and happy and chatting with each other, alhamdulillah, making sure that everyone is happy. When they see this, they say, you know what, there's something special about this group of people. What is it? What did, what changed? I mean, what happens so that they can come together and they have melted all the boundaries between them and they are all together as one big family. What is the cause of all this? Obviously the cause of all this is the religion that they are following. Then they come and ask about Islam. Why are you guys doing this? Who's commanding you to do this? I mean, is this something out of culture? Then comes the answer, no. We're doing this out of belief because we are Muslims and we believe we're following the teachings of Islam. What, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God commands us to do, to be good to the people and to enjoy in what is good and to help those who are needy and to come together as worship, as an act of worship, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're doing this not out of culture, we're doing this for the sake of Allah, seeking reward from Allah. That's why we are patient if their problems occur, we are patient for the sake of Allah. Then they come and ask about Islam. And we find many people accepting Islam in Ramadan. And I, I remember back uh, a few years ago when there was an event where some of the charity organizations have made an event for people to fast, to try fasting. They were non-Muslims and they fasted. And Alhamdulillah, many of them accepted Islam. A big number of them accepted Islam. So we, this is an experience that we have, something we have not seen or felt before. The love that we got and the spiritual feel feelings that we had is something that we did not see or feel before. And that brought them closer to the truth that they were seeking and asking these bigger questions of why are we here, where will we go and what is our objective in this earth. And with this, alhamdulillah, many people have known, know more about Islam and many people have accepted Islam. So this is definitely one of the blessings of this month on the on this nation. Alhamdulillah. So now we have seen that this month of blessings definitely has blessings on the individual by himself. He worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he fasts the day. He changes himself to become a better servant of Allah. He, he, he prays at night, doing qiyam, seeking forgiveness from Allah. He makes, dua. he makes dua in this wonderful month of Ramadan to become of those who are freed from hellfire. So it is continuous worship. And for those who are far away from Islam, this is the time that they come to Islam and they become worshippers of Allah and they become even better people. And they become better Muslims. And we talked about the effects of this month on the society, on the family, bringing the family together. And we spoke on how it had an effect on the society, making those ties strong and bones, the, the bonds between the people, between the neighbors, strong bones. And after that, we spoke about how this had an effect on the non-Muslims. And for those who are far away from Islam, once they saw what Islam had to offer, this is the chance. And it was, it had, it was an opportunity for them to bring them closer to Islam and to ask about Islam and to see Islam 
from the perspective of the people who are living in the lands of Muslims. So Alhamdulillah for all of these blessings, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to complete this month with faith and to grant us blessings from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to aid us in these times of calamities and tribulations and to make us of those people who follow the Quran and Sunnah and to be of those people who have, who, who live for Islam and who die for the sake of Islam. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله